Okay, my friends, Roger once again. Before we get into this, I want you to understand, nobody under you knows what light is. Nobody has a clue what light is. They don't know whether it spins or it flaps like a wave. Is it a particle? Is it a, is it a wave? They can see a wave, they can see a particle, but nobody has a clue about it. And the nucleus protons are they one big gigantic ball no they aren't they know they're little bits and pieces well what are they made of are they made out of what they're looking for muons and electron neutrinos and then they're trying to find these particles and create them so that they can create fusion and fission and I believe that's what we did here's your muon neutrino and it, when it concusses an electron neutrino, they create muons, which do not change, and that's the black balls, I'll show you in a second. And the white ball turns into showers, which we see right there. This is, to my mind, this is fission, which broke the white from the black, which I'll show you those particles, uno momento. So that's fission. And when they came back together, that's fusion. That is exactly what nuclear fission elect uh, you know um power plants do right now only they're very dangerous we're starting with light so we're not starting with heavy particles and we're dividing them and putting them back together we're doing exactly the same thing that they are only we're doing it on a tabletop okay these are our observations of light being accelerated as we saw that or you will see the particle being pulled out of its wave starting to concuss just prior to exploding they show up as this box of particles and then we can see there's a black ball attached to the white ball you'd never know that until until this exact event is about to occur and at this point they actually separate that's the fission all right i may go over this three or four times but hopefully you'll get, get at the end you'll understand what i'm talking about i just showed you those particles as they divide where they smacked into the the Venturi, which is right here. And then they just separate it. They fall apart. And they originally start like this. This is the accelerated light. And the only way you can get accelerated is the Venturi. And I believe the white particles, the white ball part here, has is much lighter, apparently, than the dark. It's because the dark will not go through that Venturi. What happens with the dark one is it separates and this is when we have the fusion I mean the fission All right the dark ones walk away they get out of the way and the white ones spray through here and that is exactly what CERN wants to see and that is exactly what we have can show here and I believe this is pretty conclusive evidence this is what they want to see is the black and the white ball coming in and then the white ball turning into a shower and the black ball just staying the way it is and that's exactly what we see and they say the black ball is 200 times heavier than the white one. And if that's true, that's probably why it can't get through the Venturi and has to go around. Okay, so we pretty much know that the particles have divided and then they recombine down here. Now, what we're looking for, I, I would have to assume that the black ball is the muon neutrino. We're starting with light now, so we're not starting with big heavy particles. We saw they were just exactly what they looked like just before they exploded. They came apart, so the black ball doesn't go through. It comes, or uh, it actually probably, there's more black balls that are out here because I don't think these are getting ahead and getting over to here. So they're just pulling them out of out of wherever the black exists i don't know i just I, I had never even considered the possibility that they could separate charges but it's obviously what you see now and obviously they this is an enormous increase in energetic value than we just saw a minute ago as as i showed you a second ago let me go back to here uh, this is the whole key again just so like I said I might go over this a million times that's the original light no acceleration just what a, a red laser would look like the leading edge of it and the particle is in there and its field concusses every other field look up 21 centimeter line and that's how much an ox a hydrogen atom 
controls 21 centimeters around itself that's how much a field has an effect now this is the light accelerating to force its way through the venturi this is a well-known understood thing a venturi is used in a carburetor it's the old carburetor to atomize gas to make it into so tiny a particle they would explode very easy now so that's all we're doing it's not a big thing uh, and we can see the particles down here i've shown those a number of times and they're the black and the white it's it's the uh, muon and the electron neutrino and the electron neutrino turns into showers the black one goes around that's the particle pulling out so now we know we can accelerate light I mean it's just very very obvious we've seen the particle so that's not a big stretch we know that it has a magnetic field and when it smacks into other magnetic particles they glow and everything has has electrons attached to it because everything's made of electrons. And electron flood theory says there is nothing more than electrons. And the nucleus is not a big nucleus like that. It's a nucleus like this with everything made of electrons. 100% made of electrons. That would be the nucleus of a hydrogen if it had about 1,840 electrons in it. Because that makes it a dipole, it still wants to, it's stable at this exact number of electrons. You throw a couple of extra in, it's called an isotope. You take a couple away, it's called an isotope. And it's not, it's going to be stable. It's stable at exactly 1840, let's say. And then one more will want to try to get into that black matter, because the black matter is so attractive. That's a gravity. And it'll say, no, 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 we have enough electrons here now. You're going to have to stay off. And it says, well, I'm, I want to come in. It says, no, you stay five angstrom units out there and you'll be okay. We can live with that, but you cannot come down here. We're stable. Now, if it had an extra electron, it would try to get rid of it. If somebody came along and really wanted it, it would say, okay, you can take this guy. I really didn't want him anyway. Now, the other way, you know, if it was under, it would try to grab one from somebody if somebody had a loose one laying around. That's basically... And, and they know this, that, that the, the nucleus is made of all little bitty tiny bits and pieces. And atoms, the nucleus of atoms is made of tiny little bits and pieces. And they call them quarks, and they went to leptons and bosons and muons. And, well, these are the particles right here. This is light, so we're not playing around with anything like they are. They're using 100 billion particles at a time, colliding them, and then digging through the debris and finding these particles, but not understanding because they're coming from, they don't understand it. We started with light, and then this thing here, yikes. That, <laughs> I don't know what that is, because these are the Higgs fields. And normally the Higgs fields look like this over here. All right, you get the shower of white, which is the electron showers. There's nothing there but electrons. And then, bam, they smash into the... Um, fabric of space basically which has the dark matter in it and then pew, they start to spin like crazy and polarize their little fields here and, um, and this one here I think was a reverse spinner because I did see one who came through reverse but anyway there's so much to understand about this but I'm telling you right now I believe we have made fission and then they came back together so that's fusion if anybody's seeing any other different way, I'd certainly like to understand. So now we're going to look at what Fermilab has to say. Okay, my friends, I just showed you about the muons. Now, this is an article from uh, Fermilab Visual Media. And what they're talking about is exactly what I'm talking about. This is by Sarah Charlie. And it says, the muon, which I showed you is the black ball, the short-lived cousin of the electron, which is the white ball, could be the key to understanding relationship between other fundamental particles, and it holds a mystery of its own. Now, I love to correspond with uh, Don Lincoln at Fermilab, or really anybody that has you know he's really into it and I know he's a real busy guy so I'm just gonna leave it at that I, but I'd love to discuss it with him I I tried to, to do that and and I wasn't real successful so but if Don Lincoln would would or somebody knows Don and could get him to look at this I'd certainly appreciate it you know just to, just to see maybe I'm crazy but I think I've shown enough to to support at least an examination All right thank you
Okay, this is Miki Okaku. He's being interviewed by Shepard Smith, who I'd like to get through to and have him interview my stuff. Listen to what Miki Okaku has to say about fusion. And this is what I just showed, fission and then fusion. Holy grail of energy research. To hit break even, to extract more energy than you put in. And this could eventually become a game changer. I, I want to let you know right now, they have not been able to extract more energy than they put in, and I don't think they ever will because of the way they're doing this. They're just forcing everything to collide in together, and then they're letting it fuse back together again. So they're, they're seeing the fusion, yes, but it, all it is is going to be giving back the energy that you had to put in to make it fuse. And if they can, they, they're not even hitting break even. Uh, the best I think they've ever done is like 65 percent of what they had to use to make a fuse to get back. Now, I don't know what their percentage is now, but anyway, here he goes. You see, fusion reactor is carbon neutral. It does not create carbon dioxide. It does not create copious quantities of nuclear waste that you find in fission plants with uranium. It First of all, I want he's talking about a fission plant. My stuff is fission, and then it goes back to fusion. He's doing the same thing. They're doing fission of the hydrogen into every little bit and piece of it. So in other words, their hydrogen atoms were like this starting. They heated them up so much that every little bit and piece came apart of the of the nucleuses and then when they fused back together they captured that energy which is not enough to cover what they had to put in to break them so let me just go back a minute so that we don't miss anything here here it goes not create copious quantities of nuclear waste that you oh there's another thing we create no nuclear waste whatsoever the light that we started as light came back to to particles when it, of light at the end now we're going to capture the electrons in the middle or the muons whatever they want to call them and bring them down and store them or use them right away and you could see the enormous amount of brilliant whiteness that is energy increase no question whatsoever it fissioned, no question whatsoever. It fused back together, no question whatsoever. I think we need to engage. You find in fission plants with uranium, it does not melt down. We can't it melt down. melt down a fusion reactor. And the fuel, the fuel is seawater. We don't even need seawater. All we need is, is just the atmosphere itself. Fusion from seawater could be the basic fuel. So this is too good to be true. And yet we've taken a giant step forward. However, there's some drawbacks that I should also point out as well. Why don't you go to those drawbacks and, and let, me, let me just summarize what I think I just heard you say. This is a really big breakthrough, number one. And number two, it is safer theoretically than what we think of as conventional nuclear power. That's right. This could be the energy source of the future. Cheap. Too cheap to meter, using seawater, for God's sake, as its fuel, can't melt down, uh, create almost no nuclear waste. What's wrong? Why don't we have these now? Well, it turns out that when you heat hydrogen to tens of millions of degrees Fahrenheit, the temperature of the sun, things become unstable. And that's why this reaction took place over a hundred trillion of a second. Just a snap of the fist. Exactly, just like our light splashed out and came back together. But we can continue that by just a continuous pulsation. So we, they blew up that BB by shooting 192 lasers in, just like an enormous amount of, of energy impacting, breaking these things into a billion pieces. Now they came back together instantaneously. Yes, just like our stuff did. But we can just continue to do that all day long. Not only that, we don't have to build power plants. We can do it and put it in a little container like this. You carry them around in your pocket if you want. It. And, it, and you could power a house with that, something about this size. And inside, all you would need is your laser. You may need another few components, but you, you know, regulators and maybe a rectifier. And you may even need a couple other little things like a little tiny Tesla coil and maybe even a Van de Graaff generator to, to create polarities and to create excess electrons. Yes, there's my, and you need to have, to have it tuned and you need the right kind of, of materials. Yes, very simple. Once you get that down, out the door.
Now just think about all the disasters we've been having. Just think if you could carry this down there and plug a house right into that. And when they got, the guys, you know, they, those people are out of, out of power for weeks. Some more than that. And this could power a car. You never ever have to do anything to it. Because if you can get back the energy that you're putting in and the excess is 200 times, well, that's a hell of a lot of energy that you have to use for free because we didn't have to do anything other than put it through our accelerator. And that is only just a venture. It's a, a static device. It does not have to, it doesn't consume, it doesn't do anything. It just sits there and forces the electron fields to crush into each other and then separate the black from the white, the fission, and then let them come back to it together on the other side. That's the fusion. All right, I'm going to leave it at this. I have a design I think that'll work, and it can be held in a handheld device, something like this, and with controls on it and dials and so forth to control if it's 50 hertz or 60 hertz, because, you know, Europe uses 50. Where you're going to have 120 volts AC, 240 volts AC, because that's what everybody runs on basically in the United States here. Or then you could also have DC voltages, all different styles. Click, 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 click right across this, you know, as many as you want. Then you'd have to have a little display showing you how much amperage you're using and so forth and whatever whatever little details are in a display. That's it. And it sit on the face of something like this. And you'd, and it would be cheap. This would not be expensive. And it, it, it's portable. You should be able to carry it around and run cars and run literally everything. Because they could be designed very tiny. It depends on if, it, if you need only little tiny lasers. Well, that's fine. Then you should be able to make a little tiny one. I mean, really tiny. And if you need big heavy duty stuff to really create some energy well obviously you're going to need a little big bigger powerful lasers but it you're going to be able to refurbish that laser with its own electricity from the excess and then harvest what you need you maybe need, need to store it or whatever or you might be able to just use it on demand this just needs to be investigated i don't have all the answers but we should be looking at it. I would really love to engage with some of the people that are, are doing this research. And it's tough to break in. So I love you all. Thank you, Roger. Over and out.